بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters, welcome again to uh, another episode in the series of the Hadith of Jibreel. And we are in the continuing with the sixth article of faith, uh, belief in predestination, Al-Qadr. Uh, and today, uh, because of a question that was raised uh, last session, and it was actually planned in my uh, in my uh, lectures to address this issue, but I thought I will give it uh, a session on its own and go into more details than I would have in, in a normal situation. It's about talking about uh, why does Allah Azza wa Jal decree evil, regardless of the form of the evil, whether it's wars, disasters, uh, crimes like robbery, killing, raping, etc etc before i address this i would like to lay a foundation for us we as muslims must always remember when we're talking about uh, issues pertaining to allah azza wa jal we must remember the saying of allah azza wa jal when he says la yus'alu amma yaf'al which means allah is not questioned he is not questioned about what he does so no one has the right to ask why does Allah do this and why Allah does not do that. This is very important. Another important issue or point with regards to this belief in, in predestination and Al-Qadr is that scholars emphasize that decree, predestination, is a matter of the unseen. And therefore, it, it remains something that only Allah Azza wa Jal knows. Another issue they emphasized on is that humankind, human mind, human being mind does not and will not perceive the essence of predestination regardless of how much and how deep he tries to dig into it. And the third important issue they emphasized on uh, is that going too deep into it philosophically will end up leading the person astray. The, end, the person will end up being misguided from the path of Allah. A third point in this introductory talk here is that belief in predestination, whatever is good of it and whatever is evil of it, is part of our faith as Muslims. After all, it is the sixth article of faith. It's the sixth pillar of faith. And therefore, we must submit to it. Even if we don't understand it, or understand the wisdom behind what Allah Azza wa does or predestines, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Despite all of this, we will still try to address certain points that may clarify the wisdom behind uh, or some of the wisdoms behind Allah decreeing certain matters that appear as evil, which will facilitate and make it easier for us to maybe grasp or maybe uh, it becomes easier for us to, to deal with the issue of the existence of evil. But again, we must submit to the decree of Allah Azza wa We must accept it. We must be content with it. And when we do that, then everything that Allah Azza wa Jal predestines becomes good. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, and this is reported by al darami and classed as authentic by Al-Albani. The Prophet Sallallahu said, amazing is the affair of a believer. Allah Azza wa Jal does not decree anything for him except that which is good. And I will explain this uh, as we go. Now, let's try to talk about some of the things that may clarify the wisdom of the existence of evil or the decree, uh, or have Allah having decreed evil to exist around us. One of the issues scholars talk about when they address this issue is that they say, uh, 
morals and values and benevolence and virtue and other positive qualities would not have been practiced if evil did not exist. Evil in its totality, in its comprehensive definition, because poverty is uh, looked at as evil, uh, sickness is looked at as evil, uh, loss of loved ones considered as evil, wars, and so on and so forth. So evil here is, is in its comprehensive definition. If that didn't exist, then these values, these positive good values would not have been practiced. We could not have put to practice, we could not have applied the, the, the narration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that encourage us to be good towards others. We would not have acted upon the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for example, and this is reported in Muslim, when he said the similitude of the believers in regards to their love, affection, and mutual compassion is that of one body. When any limb of it aches, the whole body shares the agony, sleeplessness, and fever that arises from it. None of that would be practiced if Allah Azza wa Jal did not decree evil in, as I said, in its comprehensive definition. Another matter raised by uh, people of knowledge when addressing the issue of the existence of evil or the decree of evil is that justice would not be fulfilled or established if people did not have the free will to commit evil. See, justice entails that you punish or reward people based on what they've done free and will. Willingly, without pressure, without being forced or compelled to do so. And if Allah Azza wa Jal had compelled people to do certain things, then it would not be fair in, on the Day of Judgment to hold them to account and punish them for that. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal gave people the free will to do and act as they wish. But He warned that once you reach there, you will see the consequence of whatever you've done or you've said. If it's evil, then punishment is awaiting you. If it's good, then bliss is awaiting you. I'll give you an example. A person has a knife. He could do something good, like slaughtering an animal and feeding poor people, or could do something evil, by slaughtering a human being and killing him without due right. If, if, we will, if we were compelled to do what we're doing, if Allah Azza wa Jal forced us to do whatever we're doing, and we had no freedom, no free will to do whatever we want to do to make our own minds, make our own decisions, and then act upon them, then it would be unfair for us to be held accountable for that. So the system of justice would be established this way. A lot of people take the favors of Allah Azza wa Jal for granted. And if Allah Azza wa Jal does not decree evil, then we would not appreciate the favors of Allah Azza wa Jal. If Allah Azza wa Jal did not decree poverty, we would not appreciate having wealth. If Allah Azza wa Jal did not decree sickness, we would not appreciate being well and healthy. As, the, as the, the saying goes, health is a crown over the head of healthy people, only sick people see it. When you're sick, you appreciate being healthy. You understand the value of health that Allah Azza wa Jal had given you and then deprived you from. So you would appreciate the ni'am, the favors of Allah Azza wa Jal. Okay. The belief system is a comprehensive one. Uh, and looking at evil from the viewpoint of this life, of this worldly life, 
uh, is short of comprehensive, to say the least, and it will not give us the complete comprehensive uh, picture. We need to zoom out in order to understand this system. Part of this system is belief in the hereafter and what's going to happen in the hereafter and that Allah Azza wa Jal has absolute justice in the hereafter. It is then when people will find the consequence of what they've done and believe that Allah Azza wa Jal will punish those who wronged you, punish those who deprived you, Punish those who transgressed against your rights. When you, when you look at the evil in this broader sense, then you have perfected your faith. And then it becomes much easier for me and you to deal with the evil that takes place around us or of over us by people wronging us. Uh, Believing that Allah's knowledge is all-encompassing, comprehensive, is, only, is the only way to look at evil and its existence. For, for, in order for us as, as creatures, slaves created by Allah Azza wa for in order for us to understand this evil, then we have to remember that Allah's knowledge is more than ours. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُ Perhaps you hate a thing and it is good for you. And perhaps you love a thing and it is bad or evil for you. And Allah knows and you don't know. Submitting to this fact that Allah Azza wa Jal knows and we don't know. We don't have the full picture of what's going on and that there is part of what's going on related to the unseen is the only way that we will understand or be able to deal with the existence of evil. Al Allah remind you with the three stories mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf. A man goes into a ship and then he punctures a, a, a hole in the, in the ship. A man sees a young boy and he slaughters him. And then he goes into a village and asks people for food and they refuse to give him food. And then he sees a wall that's about to fall down and then he goes in, renovates it and raises it up. Musa alayhi salam, when he saw these behavior, these actions and this behavior, he was amazed and he refused to accept it. And he objected to it. And Al-Khadr continued to tell him, you will know. I told you, you will not tolerate what you will see. And then Musa was kept telling him, yes, I will continue being patient. And then when he explained to him, the part that is of the unseen, that Allah Azza wa Jal made Al-Khadr know, that had he not uh, punched the, uh, a hole in the, in the uh, ship, then the tyrant ruler would have taken the ship and all that's in it. And if he had not killed that young boy, then he, could, he would have grown to be uh, an undutiful child to his parents that could have led them to disbelief and that there was a treasure belonging to two uh, young boys. Allah Azza wa wanted them to grow up to reach an age that they can take it from under that wall and benefit from it. It is only then that the apparent evil that Musa alayhi salatu wasalam saw practiced by Al-Khadr was understood. It is because of the lack of, the knowledge, of knowledge he had and that part of that knowledge is related to the unseen. And that's why many people when they object 
to the existence of, of uh, evil is because they don't know the reason behind what's going on or the wisdom behind uh, what's going on and they forget that their minds as human beings our minds are limited the capacity of comprehension and perception is limited but a lot of times we want to go beyond that trying to understand things that we will never understand because Allah did not give us the ability to understand the existence of evil would be understood if we believed in the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal altogether. See, a lot of people judge the issue of the existence of, uh, of evil based on the attribute of rahmah, of mercy, of compassion, of benevolence that Allah Azza wa Jal possesses. These are names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. And they say, or oh, evil contradicts this. Well, hold on, wait a minute. Don't you know that Allah Azza wa Jal is also all-knowing and all-wise? And wisdom, as it is defined by the scholars, is the to put the right thing in the right place at the right time. Allah Azza wa Jal is also all-wise. And when He does something, we must believe that he is doing it based on a wisdom, based on his knowledge, and based on his justice. And that he does not do things without reason, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only problem is that we, as human beings, we don't know the wisdom and the reason behind the existence of such a thing. To simplify the matter, let me give you an example. Let's say there is a... a a very smart, uh, famous uh, company who produces certain products. And it is very famous to be top of the line. Its products are almost faultless. Uh, and people buy its products without question. They come up with a product and they have a part in it without disclosing to people the, the reason behind adding it to a product or to, to an existing product. We will not jump to the conclusion of saying, oh, this company has produced a new useless product or a useless enhancement to their product just because we don't know why they've added that element to the product. Rather, we would try to understand, investigate why did they add this? And what's the reason behind the existence of this part? We would probably investigate in the, in the user's manual or email the company or whatever. But because we trust this company and the perfection of this company and the professionalism of this company, we accept the existence of this new element or this new product without... Uh, rejecting it. If this is regarding a company formed of humans, shouldn't this be the way we deal with the decree of Allah Azza wa and the wisdom of Allah Azza wa and the knowledge of Allah Azza wa Okay. Next point is being struck with evil is a means of expiating one's sins. You see, there is no infallible human being. We're all faulty. As the Prophet wasallam said, all the children of Adam are faulty. They all commit mistakes, commit sins. And the best of them are those who hasten to repentance. So we all make mistakes. We all have shortcomings and sins. Whether Allah Azza wa Jal concealed it to protect our dignity, or some of them are disclosed by our own faults as well. But we all make mistakes. We all sin. And Allah Azza wa Jal decreed evil in the form of hardships, calamities, poverty, sickness, and so on and so forth. Having an evil manager, having a, a, a tyrant husband, having a rebellion wife, have undu having undutiful children, 
any form of evil. All of that is to expiate our sins. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that the believer will be rewarded and his sins will be expiated as a result of the afflictions that he goes through. He says, hardships continue to strike the slave until it makes him walk sinless. Another thing is that evil can raise being struck with evil, can raise the ranks of the believer. This is a very interesting hadith by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it is reported by Abu Dawood and classed as authentic by Albani. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when Allah Azza wa Jal had decreed a certain rank for the slave, but his, his deeds, his good deeds, will not entitle him to reach it, he fasts, he prays sadaqah, he prays qiyam al-layl, he's kind to his wife, she's kind to her husband, he raises or she raises the, the, his or her children according to Islam, so on, but all of that together does not entitle him or her to reach that high rank in Jannah. He said, alayhi salatu wasalam, if the slave is like that, then Allah Azza wa Jal will continue to test him in his body. It's evil to, to be sick. With his wealth, it's evil to lose wealth. And his children, it's evil to lose children or to lose the dutifulness of your children. So he said, Allah will continue to afflict him with all of these and enable him to be patient until he reaches the rank which Allah Azza wa Jal had predestined for him, the Almighty. And uh, when, when someone is, uh, is being enabled by Allah Azza wa Jal to become patient and persevere through hardships, then the reward awaiting him or her is abundant. Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Those who persevere, who are patient, will receive their reward without limit. When Allah says without limit, and He is the most generous, then you can expect how abundant and great that reward that is awaiting that person, he or she will be. So when Allah Azza wa Jal afflicts us with evil and hardships, it's because we bring this to ourselves. We, we cause this to ourselves. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَا أَصَابَكُم مِّن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ Whatever uh, hardship or adversity that befalls you or strikes you, it's the result of what your hands have earned. So Allah Azza wa Jal decrees evil because we are not on the right path that he wants us to be. And therefore he strikes us with hardships and, and uh, adversities. And this is the best thing that can happen to us when we sin or when we deviate or when we slack off. And then Allah Azza wa Jal strikes us with difficulties and hardships. It's an eye opener. It's a reminder to tell us, wake up, you need to go back on the path. You need to rectify. You need to reform your relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. And finally, Allah Azza wa Jal says that being struck with, with, with evil is a way of causing people to repent to him. 
Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَبَلَوْنَاهُمْ بِالْحَسَنَاتِ وَالسَّيِّئَاتِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ We tried them with both good and evil that they might return. Return to Allah, return to the right path, repent from the shortcomings, the sins that they have committed, the transgression of the boundaries and limits of Allah Azza wa Jal, perhaps that they might return to Allah. Uh, I will conclude with this. Uh, today's session is shorter than the usual uh, and we will uh, open the field inshallah or the floor for questions and answers.